Hey again. Uh, back for another video, this time on nutrition. Um, nutrition, your diet, how you're going to be eating. Um, it's a critical component of losing weight, of gaining muscle. Um, about 80% of your results are going to come from what you're eating, um, how you're eating, how you're scheduling your eating. Um, nutrition is a very broad and complicated topic. Um, so I'm going to try and keep this video pretty short to just give you the basic information that you need. And then if you have specific questions, you can ask me or Google. There's always a great resource. Um, but you can ask me specific things. If there's more detailed questions you want to know, but I'm going to try not to go too in detail with this um, so it doesn't get confusing. But I just want to provide kind of the key information that you need to know. So um, macronutrients. Um, just to explain those, so there's <coughs> protein, carbohydrates, fat are what are known as your macronutrients. Um, and there's a, a big kind of trend right now in bodybuilding and fitness um, called IISYM. If you haven't heard it yet, it stands for if it fits your macros. Um, so that's kind of this trend where it's like, okay, as long as my food fits into um, my breakdown of fat, carbohydrates, and protein, and I can eat it, it's sort of this flexible dieting thing, um, which I guess is great in theory. Um, I don't totally subscribe to it because a lot of bad fats, a lot of bad carbohydrates um, can start to fill up your diet, and um, unfortunately, like 160 grams of um, carbs that are coming from cheesecake are going to affect your body differently than 160 carbs from brown rice and sweet potatoes um, and different foods that you could be eating that are healthier for you. Um, so um, it depends on the body type, but at least for me, I would say the more like sugary type foods I eat, things that aren't really clean, whole, healthy food that fits into my macros, I can see it, um, especially on my abs. Um, that's where I kind of hold on to everything. So, um, but there will be a little bit of that in terms of not, um, not fitting junk into your diet, but when I give you a meal plan, I want you to have some flexibility and kind of learn on an ongoing basis how not to just follow an exact meal plan for the rest of your life, um, but how to know like what foods do fit into your macros and what, what foods you can be flexible with and try um, different things. So, um, for example, carbohydrates could be brown rice, it could be sweet potatoes, it could be white potatoes, it could be um, garbanzo beans or black beans, it could be um, coming from yogurt, it could be coming from fruit. Um, anyway, that's another topic, and I'll give you a list of foods. Um, that'll kind of help you figure it out. So I want you to be able to learn how to exchange different foods, probably not in the first week, two, even three maybe of your program, um, but I don't want you to feel like you're stuck to exactly the foods I've given you in case you don't like them or in case you don't have money to buy them at the time or you didn't get to cook them that day or whatever. Um, so just know there's some flexibility and I, I want you to be able to learn how to exchange foods so they fit into your macros. Um, the way that works is the breakdown um, for macros for someone, it's going to be different depending on the person. Um, and it takes, it kind of takes time to take some testing. So we will probably do, I'll put you on a plan that's kind of my best guess for you. Um, and I really want you to kind of pay attention to how things are affecting your body. Um, and it's honestly, it's going to be hard to tell within four or five weeks. Um, but if you can start to get used to how you're feeling, how your body seems to be responding, then you can kind of adjust from there. Um, so for instance, some people do really well on a low fat diet and high carbohydrates. Um, other people, like I would say me, do well on a little bit lower carbohydrate and a lot of protein, but still not low, low carb. Because if I go too low carb, I tend to start to like waste away. Um, and I can't build muscle well without um, enough carbohydrates. So, um, and like for me, a lot of fats don't sit well in my stomach, so I have to be careful about what types of fats. So, 
same thing for you, it's going to be different for me, it's going to be different for the next person. So we'll kind of test it and see how it goes. Um, so getting your feedback will be important on that. Um, so, uh, let's see. So carbs, generally, most people know there's an issue around low carb, but some carbohydrates are not bad. They are not evil. You don't have to stay away from them. Um, however, there are some that are a lot better. They tend to digest well. They tend to process in your body better. Um, so you're going to see a lot of things like oatmeal and brown rice and sweet potatoes and rice cakes. And, um, there's not going to be a lot of pasta and things like that on there. Um, so uh, kind of a little bit more on the gluten-free side of carbohydrates. Um, not any major issue with gluten, but they just um, tend to process a little bit better if you know, them or whole and unprocessed. Um, proteins are typically going to be things like meat and nuts. Um, so you're going to see a lot of lean meat. Lean meat is very important to keep your calorie count down um, while getting in a lot of protein. Um, so chicken, fish, uh, maybe lean cuts of red meat sometimes because they're really high in fat, even the lean ones. Um, and then things like nuts have a good kind of combination of carbohydrates, protein, but they're really high in fat. Um, good fats are important. Again, fat is not bad for you, um, but the type of fat that you eat, you want to be careful about that. So um, things like avocado, coconut oil, um, nuts, nut butters, peanut butter, um, those are all great fats and they will be included in your diet. So don't be afraid of fat. Um, your body needs all three of these macronutrients in order to build muscle, in order to just operate well, to have energy, um, to keep all the cells in your body nourished and operating properly. So um, you do need some of everything. And again, we'll, we'll try um, certain percentages of things and see how it works. Um, and then you can let me know how that's going. Um, but typically, like, there's there's some pretty tried and true methods to this. And so it... Um, it could be pretty basic. It may at times be a little, seem a little bit bland. Um, but if you look at people like bodybuilders and fitness competitors, their diets are pretty um, pretty similar and pretty um, consistent with the food that they eat. Again, it tends to be a lot of egg whites, oatmeal, things like that for breakfast, chicken, vegetable, rice, sweet potatoes, um, more chicken, vegetables, um, so you want to get probably get creative on how you start to prepare these things. A lot of fresh herbs are great. Um, things like mustard, like I love using mustard on these because it adds a lot of flavor with very little calorie. Um, and just learn to stay away from things like maybe ketchup or barbecue sauce or um, salad dressings, depending on what they are, because um, those can pack calories in. Um, so you really want food to stay pretty clean, and what I mean by that is just um, simple, just kind of how, how it is um, without adding a lot of stuff to it. Um, so that's kind of what the diet's going to look like a little bit. Um, I would try and provide some variety of things like salads that have different, you know, mixtures in there. And, um, but I don't want you to be bored. I can't stand eating dry, boring, bland food all the time. I always have some sort of seasoning or, or something flavoring it, or else I just can't stick to the diet that way. So I found things like, you know, mustard or soy sauce here, here and there because it's really high in sodium. But whatever I can do to come up with some way to flavor my food really helps to keep me consistent with the diet. Um, so. Um, yeah, just look for different things that can help you keep your food interesting um, while keeping it low calorie. Um, one thing that I really want you to do, at least, well, yeah, for the whole plan, if it's a little long term plan, if it's going to be like a 10 week, 12 week program, um, you might be able to have some flexibility on it. But there's a program, not a program, there's an app for that. There's an app um, called My Fitness Pal. And Bring it up. It looks like this, and it is a gem. It's brilliant. Um, it's it's pretty proven method that by um, tracking your food, keeping a food journal or food diary, it, it really helps actually lose weight just because you can see what you're eating and track foods. And it's always 
shocking. Even now, like I've been paying attention to calories and nutrients for years. I can I have, I have the calorie amounts and protein and carbs like memorized in terms of food. But I still actually use this app that's not showing anymore. Um, I use this every day, and I have been since January. I started using it in January, and I have used it every single day since then. Um, I'm maybe a kind of OCD about it, but I really like to know um, what I'm eating and making sure I'm not going over or under my calories um, as much as possible. And that's a really easy way to do it because you don't have to like read all of the nutrient labels and then write everything down and calculate it out. It has tons of food programmed in here for you. So you just have to search for it and it gives you options on if you want to put in ounces or weigh it in grams or weigh it in whatever different measurements. Um, and so that will show you um, what you're eating. And it has, um, well, it's a, it keeps a, whoa, a count for you. Maybe you can see that. Sort of. So it has a full list of my nutrients for the day. So I can easily go, okay, I've had 17 fats, I've had 53 carbs, and I've had 64 protein. So, okay, now I know how much I have left for the day. Also good to keep watch on sodium. It's really easy to overeat sodium. Um, so pay attention to that. Try not to go too over because that will cause bloating. Um, basically, it makes us look and feel more overweight than we are. Um, so you want to keep that low. Uh, sugars is another thing. Please watch your sugars and don't go over. Sugar is horrible for you unless it's just coming from fruit. And even that will be very limited on the diet. Um, but I would highly recommend that you install MyFitnessPal um, and start to track everything that you eat so that you can make sure it's um, fitting with the measurements I've given you. You may be surprised how much you're overeating certain foods or how much you're undereating certain foods. I can be surprised sometimes how much meat, for instance, I, I'm actually allowed to eat. Like, wow, five ounces of chicken is a lot of chicken, um, and yet it can fit in my plan, or how much... Um, you know, something like peanut butter, how quickly that adds up. So I really want you to use this and let me know how it's going. Because um, that will really help you to understand what you're eating and start to learn um, the proper amounts of foods. Uh, I would also recommend getting a scale. Um, I have a scale, again, that I use with this every day. Again, these two might get a little bit obnoxious after a while. Um, but at least try to do it for a while, just so you can see, get an idea of how much you're you're really eating and how much things weigh and what what foods look like. Um, so just a simple scale. I think you can get them for like 15 bucks or something. They're just at the store or Amazon or something like that. But a, a food scale where you can weigh everything out. Um, again, tried and true method for people like bodybuilders um, is weigh everything, cook everything on like a Sunday afternoon. Package it up into meals so that all week long you have your food ready to go. You can stick some in the freezer if you need to have it hang on a little bit longer. Then you're not tempted. You don't come home hungry from work going, oh my gosh, I don't have time to cook sweet potato. Just give me, you know, whatever junk is in the fridge. Um, so I would highly recommend that too, just doing some meal prep, even if it's just for a few meals out of the day. But again, every evening I make my lunch for the next day. Um, I think ahead that if I have food for dinner and I make sure that I always have my meals ready to go, I weigh out everything, my snacks, how I'm at work, so I don't have to guess anything. I know exactly what I'm eating um, and then I track it in my fitness pal. So that's what I want you to do. Uh, so the other thing, and hopefully last thing, is meal timing. Um, so I'm going to have your meals timed around your workouts. Um, when, when you're consuming food, can be just about as important as what foods and how much foods. Um, I said before, carbohydrates aren't bad. The best time, though, to have them is before your workout and after your workout. Uh, the reason for that is both carbohydrates and protein. Your body um, is basically using up um, a lot of your energy. It's breaking down your muscles, and it needs energy. First of all, before your workout, it needs something um, 
to fuel it so that you're not eating away at your muscle when you're working out. You want to make sure you have enough energy in your body so that, one, you just have plenty of energy to work out, two, so that your muscles have these stores of glycogen, which comes from carbohydrates, in order to fuel the workout. So when you're done working out, um, it's important to put them a 30 minute window to get your body refed. Um, and that is because at that point, when you put in that food, it quickly is taken back up in your muscles in order to restore what you just broke down. Um, it replaces the glycogen stores in your body um, and helps to start refueling and rebuilding your muscles. Um, so it's very important to have um, both carbohydrates and protein before and after you work out. Um, lower on fat because that can that really slows digestion and especially well before you work out you don't want to be totally like digesting you, that'll make you feel heavy um, after you work out you want that food to go straight into your muscles and not have anything really slowing it down um, if you're gonna eat um, like high glycemic carbohydrates or more sugary carbohydrates, the best time is before and after your workout because your body can use it properly rather than have an overload that it doesn't need and then just kind of store it. Um, so kind of how it'll work is before and after your workout and then the morning is when you want to have the majority of your carbohydrates. If you're going to have fruit, that's a good time to have it. Throughout the day, it'll kind of taper down a little bit to where the carbohydrates are a little bit lower glycemic, so maybe not as much rice, maybe a little bit more sweet potato, some more vegetables. Um, yeah, they're not bad. You can have them. You can have them before bed even. Um, but it is better for your body, and your body can use more of that energy earlier in the day than at night. So that's kind of how that's going to look. Um, but just make sure you're fueling your body before your workout and after your workout. Um, and again, within that 30 minute window, window after you work out to make sure that you're getting your body fed so that it can keep the metabolism up, it can quickly start to rebuild your muscle, um, and you're keeping everything fueled and strong. You're, you're really helping to feed the muscle, which is going to in turn um, burn more calories for you, which is going to in turn help you lose weight. Um, I think that's about everything. Um, I'll put any further detail that you need into your plan for your specific needs um, and again if you have any other questions you can always ask me um, and you can always look online there's lots of resources on there too but um, I hope that is helpful sorry again for another long video but again trying to pack a little lot of information with a huge topic into just a couple minutes here so so that is everything I've got for you on nutrition good luck with that um, and good luck getting started on your plan bye